So this looks like a normal unboxing, but uh, it's not. This is going to be similar to the video we just did where we built out a Rattler, but in this case we're actually going to be building out a plate carrier. and We're going to be talking about how to source gear when everything is hard to find, out of stock, manufacturing drops as we all saw in 2020, or companies just have a hard time getting materials because materials factories burn down. We've also had that in the past and recently there was a big nylon factory that burned down and a few years ago there was a factory in um, Haiti that burned down and that's why a bunch of the Ranger Green material disappeared. So be that as it may, at various times gear is going to be hard to get. However, there's a website that happens to be my favorite where you can go and if there's something on there, it's in stock and you can buy it and that's what this is and that is eBay. So uh, I should really start a series called eBay Warrior, although I'm a civilian so I can't use that word, not allowed to according to certain people on the internet. But what I purchased here uh, last week or earlier this week is a plate carrier. However, what you're going to see is it's a carrier that is not just, you know, carrier, nothing on it. You can obviously buy those. This is one that is actually fully built out of the box, ready to go, which I know people really like when they can, you know, one-stop shop, get something like this. Uh, what it looked like was this is like a, maybe it was an airsoft or something. This is a clone from an Aussie uh, plate carrier, you know, set up probably from a photo and he's, you know, a raving fan or whatever. Uh, but be that as it may, uh, this carrier actually has a bunch of stuff on it that's super useful. I've got two rifle mag pouches right here, a Safari Land for a USP, so I got my USP out. Uh, this tourniquet, I have no idea if it's fake or real, so I'm going to rip that sucker off. And uh, there's an admin pouch up here, which is, uh, or this is called a little signal pouch, I think is what that one's called. Uh, this can take all your batteries and all your stuff. The downside to this positioning of a pouch is holster draw, if you're running a holster here, and also your uh, reload. So we'll see how that works out. Radio pouch on the side, two frag pouches over here, which can be useful for other stuff. And then a GP pouch here, which will fit, should fit one of our med kits, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but this entire thing was 200 bucks. So $200, I've got a plate carrier ready to go with pouches and stuff on it. So what we're going to do, I'm going to build all this out, grab some armor. We're going to go to the range. We're going to take a rifle that is fitting to this loadout. And we're actually going to run some reps with this sucker straight from eBay. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to get the armor for this. So because this is a budget, sort of a budget build, we are going to use HESCO L210s. Uh, these are some of the most affordable plates on the market that actually give you protection. Uh, there's a lot of snake oil like armor out there. If you see uh, YouTubers talking about how great armor is and then they shoot it against a lawn chair, uh, that is not a good armor test and you should trust it with a 50 foot pole. Uh, I'm going to use two plate, uh, two of our little plate backers, just foam, nothing super fancy, uh, because the L210s are a hard plate. It's not the most comfortable to wear against your body, so I will have a plate backer set. They're not armored, they're not soft, it's just for some cushioning and comfort, and uh, we'll go ahead and slot these into the carrier. Uh, if I recall correctly, this is an Eagle plate carrier. Oh shoot, the cumber, okay, this is going to suck. The cummerbund consists of two... Oh, geez. Well, we're going to make it work. Uh, there's not a cummerbund. That's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. So the padded side's on the inside. Or, <laughs> I mean, towards my body. <laughs> run that all the way up. L210. And that actually, not the best design, but it works. Same thing. actually there is some padding already built into this it's not a lot not a lot the no cummerbund thing is gonna suck oh shoot it's okay though we'll make it work all right so we have the armor installed into this sucker i already know just from looking at this he's also got a Nice. Yeah, this is pretty pretty OG. The single point sling is tied down directly to the plate carrier. I do not recommend doing that. This is like a really old school like thing to do. So I'm actually going to remove this. I don't want to... We could mess with it, I guess, for the video. I'm not, no. Actually, uh, possibly for a breaching shotgun. No, I don't think so. We're going to remove it. I can always add it back later. So I got this free little 
Nice, a little tie down for a, like a breaching shotgun, so that's cool. Uh, we're going to need to tighten this. I can already tell just from looking at it, this is not going to, the plates are not going to ride properly on me. So we're going to try to tighten this down as much as we can. Although with this particular plate carrier design, it looks like I'm already like as tight as I can go. I might be able to get a little more. I just need to push all this webbing. This is a very old school design. So I'm as tight as that's going to go. That actually might be okay though. And then I'm going to route this. Where is this supposed to even go? I guess you route it back through the molly? Oh yeah, we need to get rid of this. Get rid of this plate, this tourniquet. It's most likely fake. But if it's not, there's it's been exposed to the elements. You can actually tell if it's fake. Usually 2008. So we know that it was manufactured in like 2007. So it could just be a really old one. Just get rid of that. Did he leave any loot for me in any of these pouches? Like bubble gum, maybe a frag grenade, anything? No, nothing. Maybe in here, nothing. Did you forget any maps? No, I don't think so. Zip tie right here, probably for a PTT, nice. Oh, okay, I see how this works. This is supposed to actually Velcro to, uh, so you run back through the D-ring, plastic D-ring. You can come closer to me. And then normally, I guess, this Velcro part is supposed to attach here. That is if you're like larger and you want this to ride on your stomach. Um, but we're not going to do that. So I'm just going to run this. Oh, yeah, look. I can actually run all the way down to here. And then Velcro it to the inside. Oh, dude, that's sick. That's probably not what you're supposed to do. Well, actually, no. This That is probably what you're supposed to do. You're probably supposed to do that right there. Oh, that's actually great. Oh, that's cool. I mean, interesting design, but I mean, hey, it works. Now, this guy, uh, so you had the PTT on this side, it looks like. So he shifted the admin pouch to the right, which sucks because that's where my stock has to go. All right, pouches, uh, these are mollied properly. Radio pouches mollied properly. Frag pouches are mollied properly. All right, sweet. Now, there's a couple things we can do to the carrier. We also have a dump pouch that is mounted uh, underneath. So drops here in the front. We'll go ahead and use that. Uh, this pouch should be able to be folded up. If we're not using it, it should. So you probably do something like this. Oh yeah, okay, okay. I see. It's actually not slick. There's another, there's, there's two buckles for this pouch. And, uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I can get down with that. I can get down with that. That's pretty cool. But the worst part about this carrier is, uh, what's going on here on the side. We have no cummerbund. We are going to be relying on this small strap. Not great, but we'll do what we can. Now, there's a couple things about this rig that I could do. I Another thing that I've bought on eBay, and there's tons of these, they're all over, is you can find these, uh, if you want a back panel for your plate carrier, you want to be like really cool, maybe you won't have zip-ons and stuff like that, but most people don't even need that because they're not going to have tons of loadouts anyway. Uh, you can get these Eagle modular, modular assault packs, map packs, and all this is, it's not a backpack, it does not have shoulder pads, two rows of, uh, two strips of molly. I can literally molly this to the back of my carrier and build it out a little bit more. Kind of tempted to do that. I picked this up for like $65. So $65, $200. The armor with the pads about $400, so $600, $680. And I have a full setup right there with a lot of, I mean, mags, holster, like everything, got everything on there. It's not actually, not bad for that price. Um, although this is not going to be super amazing. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add this. Envision, you know, this for, you know, 200 bucks plus the armor. Uh, but I'm actually going to add this because why not? It goes with this carrier, uh, inexpensive, gives me a little more capability. I'm going to go ahead and add this. So this we will molly properly. I'm just going to make sure starting at the top. Yep, it will be right at the bottom. Nice. Nice. I like it. So two rows of molly. Molly goes through. It's kind of like, dude, jeez. Kind of like sewing. 
you know, if you've ever sewed before. And tighten it up. I'm actually going pretty quick on this. I'll say traditional Molly instead of laser cut is a lot easier to work with. The laser cut stuff, super lightweight, cool looking. It's just harder to work with. This the sewn stuff like this, the regular webbing. I like it. It's it's a little easier to use. I feel like I'm getting more old school as I get older. Next you'll see me running around with a an Alice pack. Alice LB LBE. So, there we go. Now I have a pack on the back of this, and uh, it's coming together. It's pretty good. Now let's uh, go ahead and put this on. Because this is a larger carrier, I'll go ahead and remove my sidecar. Oh, yeah. This is actually perfect. Shoot, buckle. Oh, jeez. I might actually have to lower it. Might have actually been good from the get-go. Bought this from another skinny guy. That's very convenient. If only more people were skinny like me. Okay, let me see where the top plate is. Actually, the plate's not bad. It's the articulation of the carrier. Because I'm pulling this, and it's not wanting to... It's not wanting to go. Jeez, I haven't worn a carrier with little straps like this in a while. However, I can tighten it once it's on. These suck. They're they're not great. They're they're lame. However, I have armor. I have all this stuff, and we should be able to make it work. Plate height. So, kind of this little crevasse in my neck is where the plate begins. That is correct. And in the back, it's pretty uh, it's pretty high. It's it's up there. So I think uh, our our plate height's good. It's usually hard for me to get my rear plate high enough without jacking this too high. So usually my plate rear bag rides a little lower. This is actually not bad. Uh, for how this goes. However, the entire thing is like this. I probably do need to loosen these slightly for a little more breathability. It will drop the plates down a little bit, but it will kind of stop it from doing this and it can kind of relax a little bit and be a little more straight and vertical. And that would be good. But while we have this on, let's go ahead and test uh, this guy. Haven't even tried putting a holster in it yet. These zippers could prove to be uh, problematic as far as reholstering a hot pistol. Uh, so I have a uh, USP 9 here. This should fit in the holster, but I'm going to have to make a couple modifications to it. I have a M3X light on here because vintage, retro, why not? Uh, and also this very vintage, retro, Surefire adapter. These are very hard to find. They stopped making them a few years ago, if not longer. Uh, but I have one, and it's mine, and no, you can't buy it. Uh, but we're going to have to remove it, I believe, in order for this to fit. Absolutely. Can't lose any parts. Getting replacements is probably impossible. It's actually a Surefire guy who found this for me. Thank goodness. You can find them on eBay, not for the USB. You can find them for like M9s and stuff, but that's what it looks like. A little history into back when people used um, lesser pistols for uh, duty work and needed stuff like this to make it like modern. Back in the old days. All right, so now to see if it fits this holster. I feel like I'm in Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, oh shoot. And you know why that is? That is because of the uh Yeah, it's because of the uh fabric inside. So the question is, okay, so he has the zip tie here to help secure the holster to the Molly. But we're going to try to loosen this even more. Because this fabric, I hate, the safari lines of fabric inside have all sorts of problems because of uh, the added friction. And I am not about that life. I would sooner pull all the fabric out of this holster if I could. But it might help a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's all in the draw stroke, the angle. If I pull back, it catches on the material. I have to pull straight up. Safety on or de well, I'll have to decock because if I don't decock, safety on, holster, the Safari Land hood does not uh, want to engage. So I have to decock upon holstering. And the problem is, oh shoot, yeah, see, look at that. 
the problem with this, ouch, the problem with this holster is, or this uh, particular pistol, yeah, look how dusty it is. It's pretty cool though. Um, the problem with this whole uh, pistol is there's no decocker. So unfortunately, I did a big dumb. So being the guy who doesn't shoot USPs very often and generally has a bunch of guns like this in the armory, but it really only shoots them once every eh, few months just because of all the other guns that we have to spend time on, there's something about this gun that I have not known until recently. Obviously, when I filmed the video earlier, I didn't know, but now I do. And I'm actually fine with not knowing it because it only makes this gun so much more awesome. And what that is, this gun actually does have a decocker. I said it didn't, didn't think it did, doesn't have a traditional one like other guns, like a 226 or whatever. But if you take the safety and you force it down, you actually decock the hammer. So you don't have to manually, you know, do the whole like, you know, grab it and, and slowly let it go, which you're going to see later on in the video. Um, and while that can be a safe practice, can also be a little sketch at the same time. But there's some guns out there like Tanfolios and some other like weird competition-y type guns where you actually are having to drop the hammer every time. And in competition, dudes will, you know, load, make ready and literally manually drop the hammer, which you're pulling the trigger and you're manually thumb on, slowly letting go. I'm set and I'm good to go. But the USP, you don't have to do that. You just force the safety down, let go, and you're set. All right, cool. Well, for the most part, this seems to work pretty good. Uh, rifle pouches right here. Uh, I want to say these should fit uh, double, so double magazines. So, so I can have four mags in the front, especially if they're steel mags. If it's a single, I'll be amused. Because I would want to run a double just based on only having two mags. Like, I mean, definitely a law enforcement loadout, but like, more of a military loadout? It's a single. Okay, so two mags. Two mags on the front. Pistol, two mags. That seems a little odd. That's okay. I'll make it, I'll, I'll, I'll make it work. I'll make it work. I can run extras in the dump pouch. And then the dump pouch in the front. Buckle. Buckle. Then I got my little, my little pouch. So shoot, dump mag into here. Load. I'm set. All right, cool. All right, and how this works. And how this works. Radio in this pouch. Frags here. Medical in here or whatever I want. Sick. So to di uh, ditch the carrier, literally pop both buckles. This is pretty snazzy, very fast, very efficient, much wow. Carrier comes off. That's what we're working with. And actually, and there's the rifle. All right, so like I said, we're at the range actually using the equipment and showing a few things. We're gonna be running some sprints, shooting some various drills and working reloads. And of course, working this uh, pistol holster right here on the carrier. Now, this is, as you're gonna notice, is not the most efficient way of running a handgun. Is it still safe? Absolutely. I mean, yes, I am. The gun is aimed at my body parts, but guess what? If you carry appendix or carry here on your hip, the gun is gonna be aimed at your body parts. So. You're gonna have to live with it, keep your finger off the trigger and nothing bad is going to happen. Now, because of how this holster works and this handgun, I am gonna have to manually decock the pistol before I holster because this Safari Land hood does not wanna operate with the hammer back. So I am gonna have to do something a little funky with that, but you know what, that's okay, I'll, I'll make do. Dump pouch ready to go. We'll do some dump pouch reloads and whatnot in a true Australian uh, fashion. And uh, we're gonna do a few reps. I set up a radio right here, a Disco 32 PTT, uh, my Hytera and all that rubbish on this side. Added a few other things, medical, tourniquet, uh, bungee here to the side, not here in the front where it gets in the way of my magazines. I can still get to the tourniquet with either hand just fine or someone else can. And what I would do is actually add another one to this side. So I would have two tourniquets. I could even add one underneath here if I really wanted or two more, uh, but always have a tourniquet on your kit because gunshot wounds, even if you're training out here on the flat range, shoot, someone shoots themselves with a holster, someone shoots themselves from the draw or whatever, uh, you should have a tourniquet. They do get used more than you realize on gun ranges and training, both on military ranges and uh, civilian ranges like this. So I have a few standards that we're gonna be shooting through, uh, more on this later, uh, but we're gonna be shooting through a few things, real simple, uh, with the big one gonna be uh, some sprints. We're gonna actually run with this kit. Because the fact of the matter is, if I just stand here like this, we'll go, we'll shoot a few standards right now. So uh, five yards, my headshot standard. From low ready, 
This is a hostage taker, a uh, hostage rescue, whatever. From low ready, under half a second, come up, take a headshot. Uh, not necessarily A box. A box is like pro level if you get it right in the, the T box, T zone area. But you have to do this three times and under 0.5 seconds. Let's do it. Low ready. Good follow through, second type picture. 4 7. That is in the uh, Bravo. It's in the head, not in the A box though. Good follow through, second side picture, just in case, a four, six. So we're good. One more. Fastest yet, and that was in the A box, absolutely drilled. Bouge, and that was in a four, five. Now, here's the thing though. I'm wearing all this retro kit, including this bump helmet, ProTac helmet that I didn't talk about earlier. Also picked up on eBay, 60 bucks. Uh, this stuff is not going to inhibit my shooting too much from a static position to shooting like this. I can still make my standards, do all my stuff, Rifle the pistol will be a little slower because of the orientation and just how my gear set up. My rifle reloads will be a little slower, flat pouches. But my shooting from a static position shouldn't change just based on throwing all this old, like, early 2000s kit on. Where it may start to change is when I actually start doing my sprints, where I start moving and not having good stability of, like, a solid cummerbund and stuff like that, working behind barricades, reloading behind barricades, prone, all that good stuff. But standing and delivering stuff like this, it's not going to make a difference. So those are the headshots. Let's go ahead and do a, because uh, I need an empty to do some transitions. I think I have around 10 rounds. One, two, three, four. It's mentally a very challenging drill from about 10 yards, two yards per target. So the transition's decent. I can't remember what the time standard is. It's on here. It's like three or four seconds. We'll see what happens. All right, so I can definitely feel as I'm transitioning, this plate bag zips over to here because I have no stability. And then my entire rifle gets thrown off like at a, a split second while this plate bag goes off to the side. Two alphas here, one Charlie. So four A's, one Charlie, three alphas. Good marksmanship, one Charlie, I'll take it. And that was in a 3.4. So again, all this kit, it's not changing things too much. A Little bit of wobble in the back. And my time standard for this, let me just double check real quick. Mental target, tra target transitioning. Par time slick is 3.5. Uh, par time with kit is 4.5. So uh, yeah, I'm in time. Even for slick with nothing. Which honestly, it shouldn't make too much of a difference. All right, so we have three rounds in the gun. Let's go ahead and do some, because uh, I really want to work this. I haven't done a plate carrier holster setup in a long time. So uh, we, are, we are hot. Safety off, hammer down is what we're going to do. I know some of you guys are going to be like, no, you have to run the safety. It's my rules, my kit, my SOPs. I'm going to run hammer down, safety off for speed and efficiency. Three rounds, transition three rounds. Then we'll go through the whole thing of topping the gun off, back to the uh, uh, tack magging the pistol, back to the holster, back to the rifle, and up. Two strings of fire. Let's do this. Do all my... Tactical scans. All, right. all my range theatrics. All subjective though, based on what I'm doing. That was a total time of 377. Pocket. Stupid HK. All right, went a little deliberate on the handgun, back to the holster, dropped the hammer so that I can actually work the holster, and that was in a 1209. Time standard for that, typically, uh, with a one shot on everything, is about seven seconds. Tack magging the pistol, uh, back into the holster so it's good to go, back to the rifle, and I'm set. Pistol shots are good to go, including my double action, single action, all A's, nothing out. Signals pouch, Sharpie. We'll just mark the, uh, the stuff that's out. So I had one out there, and he's, uh, he's clean, sweet. So, marksmanship, good to go. We're up close. People will say, well, you're up close, so that's easy. You're not necessarily wrong, 
but you are. You still have to go fast. If you're up close, that doesn't mean the accuracy is easy. I mean, it's easy if you go slow and you suck, but no, that's why we speed things up. So this will just be a standard rifle to pistol. I just want to work this a few times. See what my, uh, my time standard for this, a one to transition to one is under three seconds. Uh, this is about 10, seven yards, A zone. See what happens. Double A zone, 276, incredible, incredible. A level two Spryland holster that I never trained with on this guy right here. Incredible, magnificent. Both alphas, a little, the pistol shot is a little sloppy. Also a little pro tip, if you have a flat Velcro pouch, you have all this space here, fold that down if your pouch allows. It will still adhere to the front. It just means you have more mag exposed when it goes to actually indexing the magazine. It's a little, it's a little tip for those of you who run this sort of thing. So that was just to prove, because you know, people will be like, oh, let's sped up. First shot to 7.9, that's really slow. At this distance, it should be a sub five, uh, but that's a 2.76. But we have to do it three times in a row. So we'll do it a couple more times. Chad, you can get a different angle so you can kind of see what's going on with the holster. Stand by. Oh, shoot. No. Three, three, three. So. Get that. Get that side picture rep. Back to the mag pouch. Let's do it again. A little snag. And that was NA238. So very doable, very doable at this distance with this marksmanship standard from the plate carrier. It's pretty awkward though, but that's without training with this kit. You know, grabbing this kit, literally it was my first day coming out with this, first time in a long time running, a, I, I usually do up here in my training uh, versus striping down like this. But it seems to be working all right. So we can do this all day. Let's do a, uh, let's just do a flap just for, for data. Flat mag pouch. We'll go back to where we were. It's like 10 yards. Flat mag pouch uh, reload from standing. One reload one. Just do this and see what happens. So that was not perfect at all. Four, five. Definitely not within time. No bad lever, stand by. Oh shoot, it fell back down. All A zones, four, three. One more, one more. Three reps of everything. Three reps of everything. One more, stand by. Oh shoot, it fell down again. I'm not controlling the, I'm not controlling the flap enough. That was in a 3.9. So definitely, and as you can see, all A's. So we're good, as far as our marksmanship goes. But the speed is okay. Not bad, not bad. All right, now for the real fun. So we did reloads from this, so you can kind of see how this works. We did some pistol stuff. So this is gonna be the kicker. This is gonna suck some juice out of me, but that's all right. This is another one of my standards. Again, more on this later. There's already some folks that are utilizing this in another uh, country uh, that wanted some of this, which is actually why I came up with it. But I've also been wanting a, a standards of some sort, a system that I can use other kit on as a benchmark. Because some kit is faster, better, quicker, greater than that. So this is 25 meters to a USBSA target, 25 year, meter sprint. So this is really what makes and breaks some of your kit, kind of ish, not, not a lot, not big time, don't, don't think it does. But 22 on each of these. That target's kind of in the way, but it's all right, I'll make do. Two on him, two on him, wide transition. Sprint to there, two on him, two on him. So we can have eight alphas. Whew, I'm already feeling this. And then we'll go up and check it. So we'll do this a couple times. But watch, pay close attention guys, to how the plate carrier moves. Because this thing is literally held down by this little half inch thing of webbing, and it sucks, big time. I don't like it. Now, breathability, yeah, it's kind of nice, you know, get some airflow. 
but uh, not not great, not great. All right, and actually, I'm gonna pull harder for myself. I'm gonna go back more. I just want to open that target up because that one's in the way. Marksmanship, sprint, arrive in position, head comes up, pay attention to my rear bag, it's going to suck. Stand by. Mag was loaded all the way, 31 rounds. All right, so, ouch. Three Charlies, one Alpha, or two Alphas, two Charlies. Should have had a water, water thingy. Four Alphas, sick. So those Charlies on the side were on the transition at an angle. And that was in a total time, oh, I still have it, of 11.54. It's actually not too bad compared to my other kit. Let's see what the time standard is. And this drill is honestly, in my opinion, one of the most important. It works a lot of stuff. Just simple sack sack movement. That is, actually move, this is the transition, nope. Sag, sag, explosive sprint. 11 seconds, slick, 14 seconds kit, so I'm good. Now that might change, but this is definitely some kit. Now I'll do it the opposite direction. One more time. Try for all A's, but honestly, if I get all A's, that means I can speed up. Again, watch the kit. I can feel it sloshing around back there. Stand by. Nope, it's, uh, Charlie, right side. Mm. Yeah, 11.23, same time. So I'm moving and shooting the same time. The question is, how are the hits? All Charlies. Hey, at least I'm consistent, right? We have all alphas. We good. We're gonna do some reloads from behind here. So come out, shoot upon bolt lock. Uh, gonna stow the magazine in my dump pouch. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, utilize this a little bit, this little floppy thingy. And then uh, do my reload, come back out opposite side, uh, engage the same steel. We're about 30-ish meters away. We're gonna start from behind the vehicle. So I don't have a visual on exactly who the target is. Granted, yes, I know the target's there. You know, all you tactical people out there are gonna say this isn't real training because I know where it is. Um, news flash, uh, flat range can never replicate realism. Sorry, so it is what it is. No training can, believe it or not. Nothing. Firefighting, fire academy, none of that stuff is ever one for one real. And I would know that because I used to be a firefighter. And the training was great. I really liked it. It was a lot of fun, but it was not like the real thing. No way. So here we go. Let's do this. Jump pouch. Retain my magazines for later. All right, 
Not too bad, not too bad. Totally missed the dump pouch because I don't train with this. Awkward. So we'll do it again. This time it's just a single round. Single round. All right, not bad. Kind of want to do a standing one just for the rep of it. Steel once again. Oh shoot, I caught it. No, no! One more time, that's hilarious. I'm gonna go 80%. Dump pouch. Flap. Alright, that would take some training. A little flappy pouch. But not too bad. It's a it's a little it's more open than I would like. But uh you just have to make sure it's you know it's in there. So something I want to do, and you guys, I don't know if you're interested, is I want to shoot. I want to shoot this USB. So what we're going to do, I have a full magazine in the gun, who cares? Actually, here's what we're going to do. It's all this money. Get rid of you. On the move, shooting these three targets. Rifle with a certain amount of rounds. Transition, engage with handgun, on the move. Because I just want to work this USP a little bit. Oh shoot. It's not full either. So we'll leave the way back here. And what I like to do on these drills is I'm walking and on the buzzer I engage. So it's not on the buzzer I start walking and shooting. I'll literally just hit the buzzer, start walking. And then when I'm good and ready, pocket or let's say flight carrier. Tech Magda pistol. Gonna move over here a little bit. Tom pouch. Decock. Holster. Strong pouch. Rifle mag. And I'm set. Not too bad. Not too bad. There's a lot going on up here. Smashing myself with a stock. Two alphas. One Charlie on the move. Uh, one Charlie pistol. Everything else at alpha. One Charlie pistol. It's not too bad. So the point of this video isn't so much to say, hey, look how cool this kit is that I found on eBay, although <laughs> it is some of that. Uh, but the point is that regardless of whether you have like old school kit or maybe that's what you're issued, that's what you took home, um, a lot of people out there in the industry, and I will say I'm guilty of this too, uh, have this tendency of uh, trying to keep up with the Joneses, which in most cases happens to be your favorite Instagram instructor. Uh, so yes, there are people that have done that with me and I tell them don't do that. Just get your own stuff and go to work and build skill. Um, or you're following your favorite mill guy or your favorite military unit. Now the problem with that is you don't necessarily get the full context as to why that unit or that individual is building their kit out the way that they do. Uh, mission dictates gear. Everyone here has probably heard that. If you haven't, now you have. 
Um, so you really need to think about what you want to be prepared for and focus on that or what sort of situations could be occurring in the future versus just basing your equipment decisions off of just people you see on YouTube. Uh, so again, uh, you or me and or are potentially guilty because this is a YouTube video. Um, but it really doesn't matter. You know, go and get kit that's going to enable you know, give you more capability, give you magazines, give you medical, give you communications, give you water, give you sustainment gear, get equipment to complement your rifle. Just having a rifle isn't enough if you don't have magazines and you know other stuff for it or kit just for yourself, body armor, water, food, medical, all that good stuff. Uh, but this is a very simple $200 kit. I did add this bag though. So let's say this is a uh, $280 kit uh, that I then added armor into. So at that point you can add any armor. Don't, don't you add steel armor though. Uh, but at this rate, this price right here uh, for fully built, you know, old school plate carrier on eBay, um, this outperforms uh, like all the little cheap plate carriers out there on the market that, you know, are 150, you know, 200 ish dollars or whatever from like armor companies and stuff, uh, that, but they give you nothing. Uh, so definitely look around, shop around, see if you can snipe stuff like this and have a full kit, especially if you're on a budget, uh, to complement your rifle, whether it's a budget build. I mean, this is a fairly, I mean, some of you guys are going to be like, well, it's a night's rail, it's too expensive. Uh, sure, but there's lots of quad rails out there that are inexpensive. This build in general uh, is more of a cheaper ish build, you know. I've got a, a FSP upper, um, I've got standard, you know, mil spec trigger, an Endpoint Pro, which is pretty inexpensive, and a old school Surefire light, which you can find these all over the place. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have the most modern Gucci thing. Um, I do have a Malkov uh, upgrade in there though to give me lumens as opposed to an incandescent bulb. Um, but you don't have to have the latest and greatest kit to still get out there, dry fires free, uh, or just get out there and train. So, um, hope this was helpful for you guys out there. Uh, you know, like we've always said, and like we will always say, uh, training beats gear. Uh, whether you're just throwing a magazine in your back pocket or getting some old school setup like this and getting out there and putting in the work.